Now that we have a basic theory of antiderivatives and integration, we want to focus on developing techniques for actually computing these things. First big technique is going to be integration by substitution. If there's a theme here, it's going to be that we're starting with the chain rule and working our way backwards. So, let's start from scratch. Now, remember the problem that we're trying to solve here, okay, finding an antiderivative. We're starting with a function and we're asking, find me a function that has our original function as its derivative. Now, if I start off with a derivative of an actual function, then we always have the original function as an antiderivative. Okay, then to be an antiderivative just says, well, if I take capital F prime, that's equal to capital F prime. Not a lot of content there. We can rewrite that in integral form as the indefinite integral, capital F prime dx, equals capital F plus a constant. So this is what I want to focus on. Now, for integration by substitution, we're going to want capital F to be equal to a composition of two functions, which I'll call little f composed with g of x. So I'm going to need the derivative of capital F. So to take the derivative of this composition, we use the chain rule. Okay, the way that works, we're going to take derivative of the outside, solve f prime evaluated g of x times the inside g prime of x. Now, if we take these two items, put them back into our first equation, we get this identity here. I take the indefinite integral of f prime on g of x times g prime of x dx, we get back f on g of x plus a constant. Now, if you note, if we were to actually use, okay, this business of working backwards from the chain rule, using just this identity, it's a little bit forbidding because we have to identify two derivatives right off the bat. So the technique we're gonna use is called integration by substitution. The idea is gonna be you just cut back on your work by focusing on the inside function. So your first pass at an integral that might use integration by substitution, you have to identify a composition somewhere in the integrand. And then your first step is you wanna figure out what the inside function is. Let's go through our checklist for integration by substitution, and then we'll look at some examples. Now, our first step, we have to ask, is our integral a candidate for integration by substitution? To see that, I have to identify a composition somewhere in my integrand. If I can do that, then we're gonna target the inside function, we'll call it g of x. For my next step, we're going to set u equal to g of x, then we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So for g of x, that's going to go to g prime of x. For u, we're going to use Leibniz notation. That'll go to du over dx. Then I want to isolate the dx, so I push it to the other side, and I divide both sides by g prime of x. So this is going to give me an expression for dx. Now, we do our substitution. So where I have g of x, I put a u, and then for dx, I'm gonna put this expression here. If I'm able to get my integral entirely in terms of u, I'm gonna take, okay, our indefinite integral with respect to u, that's gonna give me a function of u, and then we'll replace the u with a g of x. And then that gets us to our answer. Of course, when I get my answer, we always check our work by taking the derivative, see if what comes out matches our original integrand. Now, if when I do the substitution, if there are x terms in the integrand, we're gonna need either more work or another technique. First example, we have the indefinite integral of x times x squared plus one cubed dx. Here, we have a composition, x squared plus one cubed, inside function is going to be x squared plus 1. So I set u equal to x squared plus 1. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. It's going to give me du over dx equals 2x, or du equals 2x dx, or dx equals du over 2x. Okay, can also get to here with differentials, but same thing, so you go with what you're more comfortable with. 
Now, I want to do my substitution. So for this x squared plus 1 here, we're going to put u. The x I leave alone. I'm hoping it's going to go away. And then for dx, I'm going to put in du over 2x. So when I do that, we get this integral here. OK, note the x's are going to go away. I could pull the 2 out in front as a 1 half. And what's left over is entirely in terms of u. So now I'm taking the indefinite integral of u cubed du. And we know how to do that. Any derivative is going to be, OK, you add 1 to the exponent, flip it over. So I'll have 1 fourth u to the fourth. We have that 1 half out in front. And then we add a constant. Now, that's not our answer because our original question is in terms of x. So to get our answer in terms of x, we just replace u with x squared plus 1. And then I get 1 eighth x squared plus 1 to the fourth power plus a constant. And that's my answer. Now, of course, we check that. So I'm going to take the derivative here. What's going to come out? Well, using the chain rule, the 4 comes down. OK, we're going to take that 4 turned into a 3. Then we take the inside. We're going to take the derivative of the inside. It's going to give me a 2x. And so you'll note what happens Okay, over here. The 4 and the 2 cancel with the 8. And I'm left with x times x squared plus 1 cubed. And that's my integrand. So our work checks out. OK, let's try another one with a trig function. So how about indefinite integral of x to the 6th cosine of 2x to the 7th dx. Target the inside. It's going to be 2x to the 7th power. So I set that equal to u. I take the derivative. So I have du over dx equals, OK, here we're going to have 7 comes down. Take 1 off the exponent. So I'll get a 14x to the 6th. Then I move the dx to the other side. OK, moving this term to this side gives me dx equals du over 14x to the 6th. We substitute. So I'm going to put a u in for 2x to the 7th in the cosine. The x to the 6th I leave alone. I'm hoping it goes away. And then for the dx, we put du over 14x to the 6th. So like that. Now, note the 1 over 14 we can pull out. The x to the 6th go away. I'm left with cosine of u du. So here, everything's in terms of u. So we go about our business as usual. Now, for the cosine, remember if I take derivative cosine, I get a minus sign. So our trick says for the antiderivative, you go in the other direction. So it's going to be plus sine of u. So antiderivative here, I have 1 over 14 sine of u, and then we add a constant. OK, again, original question is not asking for an answer in u. It's asking for an answer in x. So I get rid of the u by putting in our 2x to the 7th. So we get our answer here. Of course, we check our work. So I take the derivative, expecting to use the chain rule. So what happens? So I take derivative of the outside. OK, that's going to be derivative of cosine. It's going to go to sine, put the inside back in. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 14x to the 6th. So the 14s go away, and I'm left with x to the 6th cosine 2x to the 7th. That matches my integrand, so I've checked my work. One drawback to integration by substitution is that it may not be clear that you have a composition in your integrand. So we set aside a special case where I have a function times its derivative. OK, that's going to be an integration by substitution. Here, the composition is just taking your inside function raising it to the first power. So what will happen here is, when you do your integration by substitution, we'll get 1 half your inside function squared plus a constant. OK, let's see how this works with an example. And then this example is going to remind us of something that we'll need to see over and over and over again. All right, so for example, we're going to do indefinite integral sine of x times cosine x dx. Now, if you look at this, there's no composition there anywhere that you can see. OK, these are just straight up functions, sine of x, cosine of x. So the idea is, I notice that cosine of x is the derivative of sine of x. So if I think of this as sine of x to the first power, then my inside function is going to be sine. So I'm going to let u be equal to sine. du, OK, 
Okay, we take derivative of both sides with respect to x. We have du over dx equals, okay, derivative of sine, which is cosine of x. Move the dx to the other side. Now here I don't need to solve for the dx because if you note, I could just lift this whole piece out here. Okay, it's right there. And just stick du in for this item here. Then if I put in u for sine of x, I'm left with u times du. Okay, that u is really u to the first power. Everything's in terms of u. So we go about our business as usual. We add one to the exponent of one, flip it over. I get one half u squared plus c. Then we put our sine of x in for u. So I get one half sine of x squared, okay, plus a constant. Let's take a look at this from another point of view. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is, I have sine of x, cosine of x. I have a trig identity, okay, sine of 2x equals two times cosine x sine x. So instead of doing it the way we did before, let's go with, okay, I can move the two to the other side. I have indefinite integral of one half sine of 2x dx. Again, it's integration by substitution. Here, the inside function is gonna be 2x. So I let u be equal to 2x. I get du equals 2dx, and then I have dx equals du over 2. We substitute. So we have the half on the inside coming to the outside. I have sine of u, and then we have du over 2. So if I pull the 2 out, I'll have a 1 fourth. Okay, if I want any derivative of sine of u, I could use minus cosine of u. Okay, derivative of sine is cosine. So it's picking up a plus sign. So if I go in the other direction, taking the antiderivative, I pick up a minus sign. So I have minus one fourth cosine of u plus a constant. We substitute back in our two x. I get minus one fourth cosine of two x plus a constant. Then you'll note our answer here looks nothing like our answer over here. So this is the thing that we need to be reminded about often. Now, just because these don't look alike doesn't mean one of these is incorrect. The trick here is, if you get two different answers for your indefinite integral, they're allowed to be off by a constant. So we wanna to try to find the constant that links this answer to this answer. So let's take a look at the cosine of 2x. I have an identity for that. Cosine of 2x is equal to one minus two times sine squared of x. Okay, that's my double angle formula. If I multiply both sides by minus one fourth, what happens? Well, we'll get a minus one fourth cosine of two x equals minus a one fourth, and then I'll have a one half sine squared of x, and then you note our one half sine squared of x shows up over here. So these two answers are indeed off by a constant. For our final example, we have a situation where after we substitute, we're still gonna have x terms in our integrand. So this will be the first step for how we repair that. So we'll have the indefinite integral of x times one plus x squared dx. So here we have our composition one plus x squared. The inside is one plus x, so set it equal to u. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, then I'll get du equals dx. Substitute in, so I'll have a u squared and a du, and then you note x does not go away. So how do we fix this? Well, if you know, there's a way to write x in terms of u. So that's gonna be our first step. We go back to the equation we used to substitute, see if there's something that we can work with there. So here I'll have the x is equal to u minus one. So I'm also gonna substitute that in. So we're gonna have the indefinite integral of u minus one times u squared du. Here, everything's in terms of u, so we can go about our business as usual. Okay, my first step is gonna to be to multiply through. So I'll have indefinite integral of u cubed minus u squared du. Then this is just our power rule, add one to the exponent, flip over. So for any derivative, we're gonna have 1 fourth u to the fourth minus 1 third u cubed, and then we add a constant. Substitute x plus one back in for u, my answer is gonna be 1 fourth x plus one to the fourth minus one third x plus one cubed plus a constant. Of course, we wanna check our work. So I take the derivative of our answer. 
Okay, here it's gonna be two chain rules. So the four comes down, take one off the exponent. Here, the three comes down, take one off the exponent. For derivative of the insides, they're both one, so we don't need to add anything else there. Then I have this term. We'll note, I could factor an x plus one squared out of both of these, leaving me with an x plus one minus one. That collapses to an x, and then I'm left with x times x plus one squared. That matches my integrand over here. So our work checks out.